Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, August the 17th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from mainstream media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environment and how that comes in to over impact the markets with my market analysis. I also layer on top of it in these daily market commentaries some option strategies that I'm implementing into my portfolio based on those assumptions that we come up with from the market analysis. And for you guys out there, I have over 25 years honed my guidelines to trading options. Therefore, what we do is we look at this underlying, all of the internals around it and find the best option uh, strategy for that given assumption, all right? We're not just picking option strategies out of a hat. We follow specific guidelines in order to find the best strategy for our assumption. All right, so without further ado, let's get on with the economic data. It's a Monday. Not usually a whole lot going on, but today we did get some pretty good economic data or not necessarily good economic data, but some solid economic data to give us some insight into what's going on in the overall economy. Well, Empire Manufacturing Index coming in at 3.7%. That is a lot worse than what was expected at 146 uh, As a matter of fact, it's going to be one of the lower readings we've seen. Um, well, last month was pretty good. Uh, before that, we were seeing negative numbers. All right, so uh, at least it's good to see a positive number there. Mortgage delinquencies, 8.2%. Not great to see there. National Association of Home Builders Housing Index coming in at 78, expected to be 7, 74. Uh, those guys are obviously pretty confident with the low uh, supply on the market for houses and a lot of people trying to get out there and buy a house. Um, renting right now is a lot more expensive than buying a house and especially if you can lock in an interest rate uh, for 30 years as low as what we're seeing uh, is a good thing. We have seen the interest rates move up just a little bit recently uh, with the bonds selling off, but I still think that we are going to stay in and around where we currently are. I don't think we're going to see major moves in. Uh, sorry, lost tra train of thought. Uh, major difference in the bonds. All right. I started thinking gold because why? Why is gold up about $40, $50 on the day, up over 2.5%? Basically because finally... Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, comes out and says that he is investing in some gold miners. Now, he has not liked gold in the past. Why? Because it doesn't pay you a dividend. It's all based on movement uh, and things of that nature. Th therefore, he has started getting involved in gold and lightening up on the bank sector. So that has been a pretty major shift and causing gold futures to get a nice little bump here and the ETFs like the Junior Gold Miners and uh, GLD, which you guys know I'm involved. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. We've got a big move happening here in gold futures looking to test that 2000 psychological mark that we've been talking about. We broke below that, but I told you guys last week, I think we're going to migrate back towards that. Well, Buffett helping out with that whole thesis, making gold move a little bit higher today. Uh, crude oil futures right here at $42.50. Uh, $42 That's where the new normal is for crude oil. I don't think we're going to break out of this. I was expecting us to stay a little bit further like this at the mid to upper 30s. Well, we're in the 40s now and it looks like we're here to stay. All right, bonds are moving higher today by almost a point. Uh, 24, we got 30. Uh, 32 ticks in there, so uh, you know, eight ticks away from that. That can be made up rather easily. But again, moving back towards that 180 handle, I've talked so much about that. I think that that is the sweet spot for bonds. Uh, and then we move on to the VIX. We're seeing the VIX come off just slightly. That's because we're seeing the broader markets have some nice rallies today. Ah, Dow Jones dragging just a little bit, but we do have the NASDAQ up 138 points. Tech is not dead. I was expecting more of a sector rotation before we started seeing NASDAQ start to move higher here, but it seems like there's some issues with the reopening here and across the pond or globally where people are starting to see more outbreaks of the COVID-19 uh, and they're starting to think maybe shutting down is a good idea. Uh, AMC, I just saw, is getting ready to open up the theaters and 
charging like 15 cents for a movie. So trying to really incentivize people to get back into the movies. I don't know how many people are going to jump on that, but it'll be interesting to see when they start uh, really opening up. E-mini S&Ps, 19 points on the day, approaching its all-time high. It's basically as the index itself uh, has toyed with the all-time highs. These are the futures, so the futures are a little bit of ways away from that, you know, by about 17 points on the uh, day. But again, we start breaking out above this little area right here. We're seeing some resistance uh, as we approach that 3,400 mark. But we've got a line in the sand right here where we've seen some uh, major tops here and has been really difficult to break through. I think once we break through that, we're going to see us uh, pop up here to uh, the 3,500 area in E-mini S&Ps. All right, so let's check out the breakdown of the E-mini S&Ps, 30-minute chart here, 30-minute uh, candles, I should say. Overnight inventory, pretty flat again, but when we're looking at the breakdown here, you can see that the points of control are very, uh, very tightly lined up here, and it feels like a rubber band is getting wound up really tight, and what do we have to happen when that longer we sit here and build up that, um, that uh, pent up uh, energy, well, it seems to pop one way or the other, which way is uh, yet to be seen, but I believe the odds are that this is going to pop to the upside and test that 3,400 in the mini S&Ps relatively soon. All right, so let's talk about some trades that I'm doing right now with the gold, GLD. You guys remember I put on this trade uh, just a few days ago um, and I had sold the, uh, what was it, the September 170 puts in there for a dollar and 30 cents. Right now I'm working a 50 cent bid. Slightly better than that 50% of max profit I normally talk about, but we've gotten that big pop today uh, with this market. So I'm squeezing it out for a couple extra pennies here. I'll probably end up covering this by the end of the day and pay up for it if I have to, but I'm expecting gold to kind of start trudging along as more and more people get involved with this as the news comes out about Berkshire Hathaway's investment in gold uh, in a couple of gold uh, companies. So I think that we're going to see some momentum late in the day, possibly here in gold. So I'm just kind of squeezing it out for a couple extra pennies at this point. But I do expect to cover this trade by the end of the day. And again, that's the SEP. I sold the 170 puts in there for... Um, a uh, dollar and 30 cents. So basically getting out at 65 cents would be my 50% of max profit target that I normally look at. Again, squeezing it out for a couple extra pennies here this morning. All right, Coca-Cola, you guys, this trade is something that has just been a thorn in my side, right? Uh, not really a thorn. I mean, it's a decent investment, I think, but I ended up buying, uh, getting long gold at $53. It's just stuck right here at 48. So I've been trying to do some dollar cost averaging and uh, by selling the 43 puts in there. So I, if the market would come back down there to that level, then I'm, I'm more than willing to uh, take on some extra uh, Coca-Cola at that level. And that would put my break even right here where we're kind of building a point of control or where price is being accepted and that's around $48. So if I get my 43s, uh, and I'm long at 53. My average is going to be right in and around uh, that level, right around 48, 47, probably for closer to 47 at this point. Because, uh, you know, I originally had sold those March. I sold some March 53 puts in there. That's what got put to me. And then uh, I continued to lower my overall cost basis by selling the April 30 puts in there. Uh, I did that for 70 cents, bought them back for 13, so about 63 cents there. Uh, for lowering my overall cost basis because I get to keep those credits, right? And those credits are what is lowering the overall cost basis of what I paid for this because I'm continuing to roll these. And then I sold some uh, 50 calls in there for 33 cents, bought those back for nine. Again, lowering my overall cost basis on those. And then uh, that just recently sold the September 43 puts in there for uh, 49 cents, bought them back this morning for 14 cents. So lowered my overall cost basis by another 30 cents there. So all in all, I'm looking at lowering my overall cost basis on this trade by about a dollar 60 ish. Um, so, uh, you know, long at 53, lowered by about a dollar 60 ish. My break even now is uh, $51 and 40 cents. So 
That's how we stay mechanical on this. Lower our overall cost basis on different trades uh, that we own in our portfolios by doing this, selling put calls, selling some puts. Uh, my, uh, looked at selling some puts in here at the 53 level. They're just not uh, any premiums in them. As you can see, we have really low implied volatility, so it's just not helping at all. Uh, just waiting for a little bit of a pop. But this is back on that reopening trade, right? And if we're starting to see more and more closures, it's gonna make it very difficult for Coca-Cola to start making a move to the upside. All right, so that's about it. That's all I've done. Uh, looking to get out of that GLD trade. I'm still looking at Kodak. Um, it, it's it's starting to sell off. You guys remember I got out of my uh, short 12 puts that I had in there. I didn't really like what management has done with their stock uh, allocation right before they got this government loan. So uh, they've had some bad news on them. And as a matter of fact, lost that loan. So until they can figure something out, I'm going to stay on the sidelines from that trade. All right, that's it. That's all I've got for you guys. It's a Monday, like I said, pretty light. Sorry, it's getting out a little bit later than normal, but I've been having trouble with my platform. I don't know if you guys have had the same issues with TD Ameritrade this morning, but it was very difficult to get back on. So uh, finally got on here and able to get you guys this daily market commentary. So uh, check it out. Uh, go to ProTraderStrategies.com and sign up for those webinars we're doing on the roadmaps. And it basically, we are walking you through these guidelines. Very important to increase your probabilities of success by doing just that. All right, so take a moment to go over the disclaimer as we are uh, an educational company and we are not trying to give you guys financial advice, just some um, guidelines as to how to trade options. All right, so if you can't take that, take it easy.